This town is the wettest place on Earth. Here it rains almost 24-7. The sound of the rain is so loud and constant that people stuff their roofs with grass just to muffle the noise. Performing simple tasks such as drying your clothes can become a major problem. And leaving your house? The roads are often treacherous, turning to mud and sometimes disappearing under landslides, which can cut the town off completely. Welcome to Moss and Ram, a place where the sky never stops crying. Moss and Ram is a small and beautiful town nestled high in the Khasi Hills of Northeast India. But all this rain doesn't just create challenges, it also creates breathtaking beauty. The landscape is carved with some of India's most stunning waterfalls. The mighty Nokalakai Falls, the tallest plunge waterfall in the country, cascades from a height of 340 meters nearby. And the Mosmai Falls, a spectacular seven-segmented waterfall, plunges over limestone cliffs. It's a place where the power of water is on full display. Now the amount of rain that falls here is almost unbelievable. Mosinram gets about 11,800 millimeters of rain every single year. It is officially the rainiest place on Earth, with 11 times more rainfall than the famously drizzly city of Glasgow. And the records get even more insane. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, Mossenram received 26,000 millimeters of rainfall in 1985, and just a few years ago, in June 2022, it set a new record by receiving over 1,000 millimeters of rain in just 24 hours. That's more rain in one day than many major cities get in an entire year. So how do people actually survive? And maybe the most puzzling question of all, why? Why would anyone choose to live here? But first, discover the incredible science behind this endless rain. Well, Moss and Ram is caught in what geographers call a geographic trap. It's all about location, 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 and it all starts with a giant, invisible river in the sky. Every year, from June to September, the summer sun heats up the Bay of Bengal to the south. This heat pulls massive amounts of water up into the air, creating a steady stream of warm, wet, moisture-laden winds that move north, directly toward the coast of India. These winds hit the steep Khasi Hills. With nowhere else to go, the air is forced to rise up the slopes. As it rises, it cools down. Cool air can't hold as much moisture, so all that water vapor gets squeezed out, turning into thick clouds and then… relentless rain. This entire process is known as orographic rainfall, or mountain-made rain. It's like nature is wringing out a giant, soaking wet sponge over the town. So how do people live in a place where the rain never, ever seems to stop? Well, life in Moss and Ram is a constant masterclass in adaptation where every single day brings unique challenges that the residents have learned to meet with incredible ingenuity. Let's start with the homes. You might think the constant rain would destroy a house, right? So they build them smart. The roofs are slanted, so the water runs off quickly and doesn't pile up. And here the sound of the rain isn't a gentle pitter-patter, it's a deafening, constant roar. To survive this, many villagers have a brilliant solution. They stuff their roofs with grass. This isn't just for insulation. It acts as a natural soundproofing layer, muffling the overwhelming noise to something manageable so people can actually think and talk inside their own houses. During the worst downpours, the rain is so loud that they still have to speak a little louder just to be heard. Now what about when you have to go outside? A normal, flimsy umbrella is completely useless here. Instead, the locals rely on something much sturdier. The canup. This is a traditional full-body umbrella that looks like a giant turtle shell. It's handmade by the village women from bamboo and a special waterproof broom grass. You wear it on your head, and it's large enough to keep you dry from your head down to your knees, leaving your hands free to work. But how do people dry their clothes in a place where the sun never seems to shine? This is one of the most frustrating daily battles in Moss and Ram. The simple answer is, it's incredibly difficult and there is no perfect solution. The air inside the houses is also thick with moisture. It's so humid that hanging a wet shirt inside means it might stay damp for days. It never gets that crisp, sun-dried feeling, so people hang clothes near the kitchen fireplace, using the heat from cooking to slowly drive the moisture out. But often the result is that clothes just dry, slowly and incompletely. It's usual for people to wear clothes that still feel a little damp. They simply get used to the feeling. In Moss and Ram, power outages are also a common fact of life. The relentless rain and storms often damage lines and equipment, leaving homes without power, sometimes for days at a time. And that rain creates another, more dangerous problem landslides. All the water soaking the hillsides makes the ground unstable. There are stories from the past of entire villages being tragically washed away by massive landslides triggered by the rainfall. Even today, the threat is real, and these landslides can cut off the town from the outside world, blocking the only roads in and out. Knowing these challenges are coming, the people of Mossenram have to plan ahead. Before the peak monsoon months hit, families are busy stockpiling supplies. They gather enough food and firewood to last for long periods because they know there will be times when it's too dangerous to go out to the market or the roads will be blocked. 
But life isn't just about enduring the rain, it's also about finding comfort and joy. And a lot of that comfort comes from the local food. When the weather is damp and chilly, a popular dish is simple yet warming. Boiled potatoes served with a special chutney called tongue top. This chutney is made from fermented dry fish, chilies, and tomatoes, and locals say it just doesn't taste the same without the rains. Another local snack you might find is pusaw, a steamed rice cake with orange rind, often enjoyed with a local red tea. So if you can't work outside, how do people in Moss and Ram make a living? With farming being so difficult, the local economy has adapted. Many people work for the government, in schools or in small local shops. But one of the biggest sources of income has come from a surprising place, tourism. Because of its title as the wettest place on earth, thousands of adventurous visitors come here every year to see what it's like. This has created jobs in homestays as local guides and in selling traditional crafts to tourists. Now here's a puzzle. With all that rain, you'd think this would be an agricultural paradise, right? Wrong. The rain is so heavy and constant that it actually washes away the fertile topsoil from the fields. It also waterlogs the ground, drowning the roots of many crops. So instead of endless fields of rice, farming is limited to things that can handle the wet, like certain types of potatoes and a spice called black pepper. And all those clouds create another invisible problem, a lack of sunlight. Without enough sun, people can become deficient in vitamin D, which is crucial for strong bones and a healthy immune system. It's a quiet health challenge that comes with living under a permanent blanket of clouds. Yet, despite all these hardships, there is one thing that stands out, the deep connection people have to their home. When asked, many residents say they would never want to live anywhere else. One village headman perfectly captured this feeling, stating, I'll never leave, this is my home. I was born here, I will die here. But as we leave this soaking wet corner of the world, it leaves us with some final, puzzling questions. Could you handle a life where the sound of rain is the soundtrack to your entire existence? What do you think you would miss the most about the sun? And if you had to choose, what is the one modern comfort you think would be the hardest to live without here? Most of all, what does this story of human adaptation in the wettest place on Earth teach us about our own ability to survive and find community, no matter where we are? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.